Welcome to the Bill Levinson Experience, a motivational podcast relating to the insurance brokerage industry and business in general. And now, here's Bill Levinson. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Bill Levinson Experience podcast. I appreciate everybody taking the time. As you know, we do these once a month, and we try to handpick a a great uh, presenter, uh, most of the time related to our insurance industry. Um, Sometimes we have uh, great industry influencers outside of the insurance space, as you know, if you've listened to the past episodes. Uh, But fast forward to today, we have someone that, that truly stands alone in the premium finance space related to the insurance industry. So I know most of our audience are agents and advisors out there. We do have some that are not, and we always try to keep these motivational and and inspirational so everybody can walk away with some great nuggets of information. Well, I can promise you today is one of those episodes where you need to take out a fresh pen and paper or your notes app on your phone, whatever it is, you're going to want to write down some of these ideas. And the slim chance that you happen to be a, a, a prospect or a client that maybe uh, you say, hey, this is a great idea, obviously you can contact any one of our agents after the call or let us know and we'll put you in contact uh, with one of our agents in your state. So with that said, um, let's focus on the main presenter today. We have Kim Coulter from Northstar joining us. And the reason why I say this is a a special episode is because there are so many agents out there. We have 17,000 plus agents in every city in the U.S. today. And most of the agents out there are are writing a lot of the smaller policies, maybe mortgage protection, uh, final expense, smaller whole life and universal life. And everyone's looking for that big ticket item or that big case where they can make, you know, two, three, four hundred grand of commission and, you know, literally change their year and for some change their life. So this episode today speaks exactly to those agents that want to change their game and even to maybe some of those agents that are you know mdrt qualified and you know that are writing some of the high ticket cases this is another avenue for you to explore so basically what i'm saying is for everyone listening okay if you're a client or prospect great but i know most of you are agents and if you're one of those agents okay and you have a high network clientele or let's say you have a network of friends family neighbors i know me uh, all of you know i'm into the exotic cars and you know once a month i put on these big events and All of these guys and girls that are driving these fancy cars are perfect candidates for premium finance. And and if you can just put on your thinking cap for a second, and as you're writing down notes, start to think about names where you can bring up a premium finance opportunity too, even if they already have an existing whole life or UL case. This is a great, great solution and a way to literally change your year and for some, your life. Okay, these are huge cases. Right now on the average, just so everyone knows, we're placing like two to three a month. Um, Kim's firm is placing literally probably five to ten a week, and I'm going to let him talk more on that. It's probably even more. But anyway, the point is the cases are out there, and this is 100% compliance, okay? So you don't have to worry about the gray area or the small print. Um, Everything is 100% compliant, and Levinson and Associates stands behind you, as well as Northstar, who we've partnered up with for all of our premium finance cases. Okay, so without further ado, I want to introduce Kim. Kim, thank you so much for for taking the time and, and joining us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Bill. It's an honor to be with you. Yep, no, no, no problem. So, so if we can just uh, start off and just explain to to everyone a little bit about yourself and maybe about North Star, and then for the second question, I want to take you back to for uh, let's say your college graduate days and tell us how how you started in the business, and then we'll kind of go from there. So we'll start with yourself and a little bit about North Star, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, I appreciate the opportunity to do so. And again, I'm honored by the relationship with yourself and Carrie and everybody at Levinson and Associates and especially all the people listening in on the podcast today. 
I've been in the business, as I was sharing with you in another conversation, it's, it's hard for me to believe this, but uh, this coming January in 2020 will actually be my 40th anniversary in the life insurance and financial services industry. And it's, um, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, time flies, but I genuinely love what I do every day. And I feel incredibly fortunate by the opportunity to work with guys like yourself and your father. You know, we love what we do. I started with the Equitable straight out of Texas Tech University. Yes, I'm a very proud Red Raider alumni. Um, I fly back for every game. Uh, but we, I started at the Equitable, Mother E as we called it, um, in 1979 and got my license officially in January of 1980. Um, wow. The irony to that is, is that now, you know, it, it used to be the Equitable, and then, of course, they changed the name to ACTA, their parent company, and now it's on the way back to becoming the Equitable once again. <laughs> so it just I goes to show that. you that, yeah, if you stay in one place long enough, everything truly does come full circle. <laughs> but. Um, I, you know, I started out as a PPGA, just like most of the folks on the line today. Um, I found my niche, so to speak, about nine years into the business. Um, you know, was an MDRT qualifier in there multiple times, which really didn't mean anything except I could sell a little bit, which ironically is a typical, you know, young guy coming out of college. You know, I'm trying to get people to buy a hundred dollar a month participating whole life policy from me from Mother E, as we called it. Uh, with $5 in my pocket, but was lucky, uh, had some success. And then nine years into my career, got the opportunity to move into the wholesale side of the business with back then what was a very popular name and well-known firm in the industry of E.F. Hutton. And of course, E.F. Hutton uh, was, a, was a starting point for me, as I said, to get into the brokerage space. And I really found my niche in being able to help somebody, whether it was you or Carrie or anybody else, being able to help them make a sale that literally made a difference in their lives. And that may sound a little bit corny, but still to this day, that's one of the things that I'm most proud of, not only for myself, but my entire team. We genuinely take to heart our responsibility and obligation to make a difference for your advisors. If they choose to participate in the premium finance space, all we want is the opportunity to show them why we believe we're the best choice in the industry. Now, you can set aside the fact that we're the largest funder in the entire space, and you're right. We did over 200 transactions in the first quarter of 2019 alone. There is nobody else in the space that will even come remotely close to that or even get to 100 transactions. Um, I don't say that from any position of arrogance. I share it with everyone as a statement of fact, all right? We are the largest funder in the space, but I think there are definitive reasons for that. And again, um, I apologize for the long-winded answer, but no, you know, no, at the no, end of the day, pre premium finance is all we do. You know, I transitioned away from the brokerage space as a wholesaler completely into the premium finance space. We actually did our case, our my very first case back in 1995, believe it or not, all right? Um, and it became the bulk of our revenue as a firm. And so a little over three years ago, we completely transitioned out of the BGA space, FMO, IMO space, and released all of our agents to relationships like you and Carrie, Levinson wow. and Associates, all right? Our broker dealer accounts, we released everybody so that we in turn could be completely neutral and make the carriers our customers and of course, hopefully, all the people like Bill and Carrie Levinson and everybody at Levinson and Associates, you know, our customers. All we wanted was the opportunity to show you why we've become the largest funder in the space and then let you make your decision. You know, and it's worked out really well for us. Yep, I think it's I think it's so important too for everyone to know. So yeah, Kim basically started. In fact, when I was five years old, uh, you were out selling already. So I, I think that's interesting. And then so you basically became you know top of the table, say MDRT, and then started an agency. Let's say even similar to Levinson and Associates, and then figured out about what five years ago roughly that you you found this this niche and and, and decided you know what i'm going to leave everything behind and create this company that focuses a hundred percent on premium finance is that pretty much the way the way it happened kim 
Well, yeah, that's 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 for the most part, that's 100 percent accurate. I mean, we started doing the premium finance transactions back in 1995. And, and like everybody else, you know, when we rolled into the 2000s, you know, there was a five year period in there. We were doing five or six cases a year, candidly. And so, you know, with the advent of it going up to all the way, say, 2008, when the Ioli Stoli, you know, um, oh, platform yeah. actually hit the industry, you know, we at that time we were doing on average about 50 cases a year. It was it was actually the bulk of our revenue. I was just stubborn, you know, and didn't want to release the agents that, you know, had been with me for quite a, a long period of time. But. You know, the handwriting was on the wall. I just didn't see it to be candid. Uh, so, as I said, we released all the agents, but, you know, rolling into 2008 when the Ioli Stoli business uh, came about, um, those were tough times for us, you know, in the sense that we didn't participate in those. And uh, it was free money. It was, you know, fraudulent, arguably. And we chose not to participate in it, which, you know, at the time financially was really tough for us because everybody wanted the free funny money deal up there oh, that yeah. they could get paid and make a lot of money on art easily. But at the same time, you know, we knew it just wasn't the right thing to do. And so we didn't participate. Consequently, you know, we went back to doing like two cases a year and um, it was a pretty, pretty bleak time, but it worked well for us because yep. as arduous as I was about not participating in it and being very outspoken about the illegitimacy of that particular transaction with the carrier executives and everything else, they knew that ultimately we were a firm of honor, ethics, and integrity because we chose to sacrifice and not participate in it and not make any money, you know, in what, again, as I said earlier, was an illegitimate transaction. As a result, the carriers today, by the way, were vetted and approved by the legal and compliance department that 19 carriers, all right, mm -hmm. The carrier executives knew that no matter what, we were always going to do the right thing. You know, and I, yeah. and Bill, you've heard me say this. At the end of the day, you know, if somebody wants to cut corners on a particular design methodology, you know, or they want to see a structure that we know is just not going to pass muster or whatever, and look, we're all sensitive to the fact that most of these are big ticket cases. You know, and I want your advisor to make as much money as he or she can too. I, would, I do. But at the end of the day, if we can't do it right, then we're just not your shop. There are plenty of other firms out there that are willing to cut corners and try to help an advisor make a big commission so that they, too, can benefit from that. You know, fortunately, now we've completed over 2,000 transactions over the past 21 years of participating in the premium finance space. So, you know, again, we're, we're very hard line, if you will, about process and methodology and making sure that no matter what, if an advisor sells a transaction or places a, chooses to place a transaction through Northstar Funding Partners, you better believe that we can defend the basis of the numbers if challenged to do so in a courtroom or any other setting. You know, and if we can't defend the basis of the numbers that we put out in a customized design for every one of the Levinson and Associates advisors, then again, this may sound a little tough, but we're just not going to do it. Yep. No, that's and I realize smart. how that sounds, but it's our position and it's firm policy. Yep. No, it's smart. And and you look at everything that happened in, in the premium finance space, you know, eight, 10, 12 years ago. And you're right. We had, we used no, to get definitely. a lot of those calls. Yep. We used yep. to get calls from attorneys all over saying, will you participate? And, you know, it was two, three, four hundred thousand dollars of commissions and, and we had oh, to yeah. turn it away. Yep. Just just like him. And so look how that paid off for you, you know, and, and, and yeah. that is awesome. And I, I love to hear that. All right. So, you know, if you're if you want to play in this space and, and you want to participate, you have a, a network of, let's say, you know, white collar candidates, doctors, let's say uh, professionals, whatever the case is, you you need to, to understand, you know, what to look for. OK, what is a great candidate for this? So what, what I want Kim to do is just take a second and Kim, just pretend you have your agent hat on, you know, and who would you say, where, where's a good place to start prospecting for, for agents or who would be a, a great candidate for either your smaller platform or the larger platform? That's the, the higher net worth individual. Do you want to explain that real quick? 
Yeah, sure. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak to that. You know, at the end of the day, you're talking about successful people, you know, that all have to come back and agree with you on one thing. You know, they have to want life insurance and they also have to have a need for the life insurance. If they don't, then look, you and I know that you just don't have a customer, all right? They're not a suitable candidate for the transaction, but if they have a need for life insurance, you know, and it's probably that individual that's very successful. And by the way, we'll define successful for the purposes of establishing a base platform for the new IRA insured retirement advantage, the new IRA. The successful person is making at least $100,000 a year or more. We'll come back to that, all right? But at the end of the day, you have to have a client that probably agrees with you, Bill. They yeah. need the life insurance. Some of them have, will probably even admit they want the life insurance. They just don't want to pay what you showed them their alternative cost is. And in that particular circumstance, you know, they tell you or the advisor, you know, you need to find another alternative. Yes, I agree with you. I need $8 million of life insurance for estate planning or for a, a buy-sell agreement. But you're absolutely nuts if you think I'm going to write you a check for a six-figure premium. You need to find another option. And, of course, at that point in time, you and your advisor know that your only alternative is to do what? Write term insurance, which effectively means the client's kicking the can down the road, and we all know they're going to have to deal with it. But it all starts and begins with an individual that agrees with you. They have a need for the life insurance. They've admitted to you that they want the life insurance. They just don't want to pay what you showed them the cost of that amount of face amount is. Now, that's for, you know, defined purposes. If you're selling life insurance as a retirement plan supplement or, you know, a popular industry term is a LERP, life insurance retirement plan, you know, then at the end of the day, you know, the, the simple proposition for the successful purpose person is, you know, maybe they don't want to participate. And this would kind of lead me into, you know, a couple of case examples. So I hope, I hope I've got a little leeway on time here to yeah, share this, perfect, this with everyone. Perfect. Tim. You know, we actually, we did a case on an air conditioning and heating company, believe it or not, in Texas. All right. And the irony of it is, is that the owner, you know, did not like the stock market, you know, just felt like it was a, a casino and a, and a con and a con game and all that kind of stuff, all the bad connotations that, you know, one could associate with the market. By the way, in full disclosure, I'm completely the opposite of that and fully invested in the market as well as in my life insurance. But at the end of the day, this gentleman was presented the concept by one of our advisors with um, an association with Levinson and Associates and some firms like that. He was presented the opportunity to actually fund a life insurance policy all right, and have a bank make the premium payments for him so that he could supplement what, in this particular case, he wasn't even doing. He knew he needed a retirement plan. He loved the idea of generating tax-free income. All right, He was disappointed to some degree that he didn't think he was going to be able to get a tax deduction. We solved that problem for him as well. But he had a need for the life insurance. And again, it all comes back to that need. You know, we're all taught to sell the need. You know, and in this particular circumstance, not only did we satisfy the need for the life insurance, but we satisfied it in a multiple way in the sense that not only did we generate tax-free income for him in the future, but with the living benefit riders. Now, we also addressed another key component that is a spinoff pro uh, value or benefit to the consumer in those living benefits so that we provided protection for him in the event something medically happened to him that was unexpected. This gentleman loved the transaction so much, he had three highly compensated salespeople. And I say highly compensated, the, the smallest compensated individual there made 300000 and the kid was 29 years old. Of course, to me, at 61 years old, that's a kid, all right? But they all were making more. The other two gentlemen were making 400 and 440 and the one kid was making 300 and they sold air conditioning and heating equipment. None of them had an affinity to the market. The good thing was is that the employer also did not want to put in a qualified retirement plan because he did not want the admin expense. And even though they were all making good money, 
you know, five grand for an admin fee was more than he was willing to stomach, and he just didn't want to pony it up. And again, he didn't want fiduciary oversight responsibility. So he said, could we do this for my employees? And the advisor said, you mean like a non-qualified deferred comp plan? And the guy's like, well, explain non-qualified deferred comp. So the advisor went through, you know, what that means and what it entails. And my point is, is that those other three highly compensated people in a small town in Texas actually participated in the same transaction. So when, you know, when whether it's a traditional premium finance candidate or our smaller case platform, the new IRA insured retirement advantage, you know, the platform has possibilities and you never know when the opportunity to take a single case and turn it into multiple cells is staring you in the face. And so we did our first transaction on a group basis on that small company in Texas for what turned out to be you know, several hundred thousand dollars in commission. Now, if you'll humor me for a second, I will spin off into the case that we just completed this past March for National Life Group. That's the largest case in the history of their company for what was a little over $24 million a year in premium. Again, we had another employer approach an advisor about putting in, you know, a non-qualified deferred comp plan for his employees because his business was wildly successful. People would stay with him for anywhere from three to five years. He would train them on how to become experts at what you know they offered to the to the country, uh, and then they would turn around and leave. And he got tired of it. And look, with the job market being hot as it is out there right now, you know he wanted to put something in. But again, he's another one of those individuals that didn't want to tie anything to the market, you know. And he had over 150 employees, so. You know, there was significant concern on his part about admin and fiduciary oversight responsibility, et cetera. So we actually turned around and created a transaction and a case design for him and his 72 managers in all 50 states to actually put a finance life insurance policy on all of his managers, some of them for multi-million dollar face amounts, most of them for multi-million dollar face amounts because the minimum we do is one million. All right, for what turned out to be, you know, a non-qualified deferred comp plan for those people with golden handcuffs wrapped around it so that they had to stay in order to obtain the ultimate benefit in the contract. Uh, and that's, you know, those are two wildly good examples. That case ended up being, once we did the estate planning uh, with the advisor on the owner of the company and his wife, that case, again, ended up being over $24 million a year in annual premium, all right? So you just never know, you know, and it it actually took our largest producer, all right, at another firm, it actually took him three years to allow me to let me explain what the new Insured Retirement Advantage platform entails. Here again, he went in to show an owner, you know, X million the face amount for estate planning, the, the guy balked at the cost. The gentleman went back in there with the finance model that we prepared for him, and he said, well, this is fantastic. Again, could you come back and show my employees something like this on a scaled-down level because they're after me to put in a qualified retirement plan? In that particular case, the same thing occurred, only this time, when the advisor went back at night to share the model that we had prepared on what was then 50 people, he went back hoping to sell, you know, he wanted to sell all of them a million dollar face amount. Well, unfortunately, he didn't sell the million dollar face amount and he didn't get all 50 people, but he got 33 participants in the transaction and all of them bought $2 million face amounts for 997000 in target premium. Those are good days. So if you'll forgive the, the crude expression, I tell folks every day, because everybody, as you started out the podcast today, Bill, correctly, so I might add, by talking about the big ticket commissions, don't poo-poo the small case platform, because you never know when that multi-life opportunity is sitting right there in front of you to make you know, the ultimate score or hit a home run. That's a that's a great point. And even even if your prospect has a net worth of what two million, three million, they fit into to the first platform, right, Kim? So you don't have to look the other way. 
Is that yeah, that's typically, correct? Yeah, the industry, you know, the, the carriers, if you will, the industry defines a traditional premium finance candidate as one who has a minimum net worth of $5 million. Well, obviously, the question becomes, well, how many people have a net worth above $5 million? You know, and you can Google this. The answer is a little bit more than 3 million people in the country. Now, Bill, you and I know, being the, the well, let me make that carry, <laughs> being the yeah. fellow old guy, savvy guy that he and I are in the business, you know, at the end of the day, you know, half of that potential 3 million people in a prospect pool, half of those people are either A, uninsurable, or B, you know, they're too old and you just can't make the math work. All right. We're, again, we're not going to cut corners just for the sake of doing a transaction. Or C, they're anti life insurance. So roughly you've got, you know, a prospect pool that is around a million and a half people. And I'll argue it's significantly less than that, closer to a million people with a competitor pool of about a million licensed insurance agents. Now, again, to be fair in that regard, you've got about half of that particular agent population, if you will, that is in the PNC business, people we all need and use every day in our everyday lives for to insure our cars, our homes, and everything else, all right? You've got people that are specially lined advisors that maybe focus only on annuities, or maybe it's just long-term care, or any of the other ancillary health benefits, you know, cancer insurance, et cetera, that they can offer, you know, or maybe they're reinsurance agents, you know, because those people have to have a license too. And then lastly, the last part, uh, the competition pool is the biggest threat to everyone's practice, and that's the banks and the platform people that work in those bank lobbies, right? Because they sell credit life. As a result, they've got to have a life insurance license too. And so my point is, is that you've got about half of one million license agents as still competitors. And by the way, I didn't even talk about the wirehouses, but you've got about 500,000 competitors competing for a prospect pool of maybe – a million people. Well, that's a pretty tight market. It's also wildly competitive for the obvious reason that the sales are big and there's a lot of money involved in it, but they're also extraordinarily competitive. And, you know, cases like that can take, you know, several months to several years to actually come to fruition. You can starve to death in the process of hunting that great elephant, right? So what we wanted to do was take the benefits and the power that premium finance provides for, to what was heretofore just the wealthy and build out a platform that actually had wide application to what is the largest marketplace in the country, small business owners. Exactly. Let me and say one thing, Kim, 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 real quick. I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want everyone to, to pay attention here because – you know, they have these two platforms, and I, I want everyone to understand in black and white, ABC's over $5 million of net worth, okay, these are just ballpark numbers, will qualify for the, the larger platform. And for the first platform, say uh, roughly a million to five million, okay, this is the platform that Kim is talking about now, and I want everyone to pay close attention because I, in my opinion, you guys and girls out there should be selling one of these, I would say, on the average of at least once a month, if you will, okay? So, so I want everyone to pay attention and start thinking about who's a, a candidate. Okay, Kim, sorry about that. Kim, you there? Oh, I apologize. Uh, what we wanted to thank you for, for saying that, Bill. At the end of the day, we wanted to build a platform that allowed millions of people to actually be able to benefit from the same power that leverage or financing their life insurance provides. So, you know, when you think about the working population in America, 158 million people are employed in this country. Technically, the number is 164 million, but there's 6 million people on unemployment, right, and are out of work. So you've got 158 million working people in this country. Three-quarters of them work for small business owners. I want you to think about that for just a minute, all right? I mean, you can all do the math. There's a little bit more than 28 million small businesses in America, three-quarters if everybody you know, everybody that's on this podcast this morning, three-quarters of all the people you know work for a small business. By the way, it's everyone on this podcast. 
all right? So it's you yourself as well. So we wanted to build out a platform and fortunately have been able to do so very successfully that would bring the benefits of finance life insurance to millions of people as opposed to just the highly net worth and highly wealthy people, all right? Because you've got a massive market out here that was heretofore untapped. So here's what we did. And by the way, I want all of you to take this platform and make it yours. I went through the United States Patent and Trademark Office a little over four years ago and obtained the rights to the name, the new IRA, Insured Retirement Advantage. So, Bill, with a little bit of bait, I'll ask you, have you heard about the new IRA? I think Absolutely. that's arguably a, it's a pretty good door opening line, all right? I, and I with the it. fantastic job that you and Carrie and everybody at Levinson & Associates does on training your advisors about why life insurance with a particular carrier, you know, who's competitive in what niche, who's the best offer opportunity and product solution in a particular underwriting situation or whatever, you know, at the end of the day, we built out a platform that would provide, if for nothing else, the opportunity for the 28 million small business owners to participate in a premium finance transaction or a financed life insurance policy, if you will, all right? Now, the qualifications for these participants is they have to have a minimum income of at least $100,000 a year on their tax return, okay? So they don't have to have a net worth of $5 million, but as a general rule, whatever the premium is we're financing, and by the way, our minimum premium is $50,000, there is nobody, no other funder in the space that can do that. All right, we are it. The minimum premium we can fund is fifty thousand dollars. And if, if we were funding a policy for Bill Levinson, at forty-two years old, all right, and the premium was fifty thousand, Bill, you'd need to have liquidity of roughly four times whatever that premium is, or two hundred thousand dollars at a minimum. Now look, that also begs the question, if you're making if you're an individual that's making one hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars and you have thirty four hundred dollars in your checking account, that's not a prospect, okay? <laughs> you know, yeah, just because they're obvious. making good money, some people are spent through this and they just don't save money, and that's not passing judgment. Again, it's just a statement of fact. They're not a suitable candidate, all right? Yeah, so that's the type of individual that we're striving to provide a solution for. Again, it's that well compensated individual it's that small business owner but you know that would probably beg the question to an individual on the podcast today that well you know i know john and and mary smith down the street and they're both making really good money but they don't have ownership in the business but one of them's working for marriott corporation the other one's working for you know an air conditioning and heating company you know and together they're making over three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand dollars a year that's an ideal candidate, all right, as long as, again, they have legitimate net worth that's going to be equal to, say, four times whatever premium amount we're funding. So, again, to, to kind of bring it back full circle, we're talking about being able to fund a million-dollar minimum face amount. By the way, the maximum on the Insured Retirement Advantage platform is $4 million. The maximum age is 60 all right? But they could have a net worth of well under a million dollars and still qualify for participation in the new IRA Insured Retirement Advantage. And again, I own the registered trademark and all rights associated with that name. I'm sure somebody will want to go Google it, be my guest. But the benefit for, you, for every advisor that you have on the podcast today is, look, in our case designs, and, and Bill, you already know this because, you know, for those people that are on the podcast, nobody knows this, but Bill and Carrie do. We just funded a five hundred and forty some odd thousand dollar premium for them uh, last week on a large case. But at the end of the day, one of the reasons that earned us the opportunity to fund the case and design it for them is that we customize every design with your name on it, yours being the advisor. You know, if it's Joe Jones, we're going to have Joe Jones Financial, your company brand and logo on every page, not ours not our exclusive lending partner, not the carrier, not Levinson and Associates too, unless the advisor wants your company name on it. And then of course it's up to y'all. But at the end of the day, we wanna constantly promote 
your name and your brand and your value to your customer. It's you that's out there working hard to establish a relationship with a well-to-do individual, not us. And I feel it's our obligation and responsibility to promote each of you in that particular circumstance. Take our platform. We'll put your company name and logo around it and make it yours and go make money with it. Have you heard about the new IRA? Yeah, that, that's a great hook. And we have, by the way, all the marketing material we have also on our site under the premium finance section. And then that brings up another good point. And then we can dive back in. We actually have a full one-hour training webinar tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. So most of you will hear this after, okay, which is fine. Um, you can find that webinar through our website under archived webinars for look just look for North Star Premium Finance. So in fact Kim's uh, right hand Dale is going to be the one hosting it with me. So you should also uh, check that out too and you can look for the marketing material. We can co-brand it uh, just like uh, Kim said use your logo, your information. But this is that's a huge door opener and most of that prospecting pool falls into that space uh, on the IRA that Kim just mentioned. So again, just uh, keep your ears, ears peeled and 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 notes taken. Okay, Kim, you, is there anything else that you wanted to, to go into as far as the, the first IRA platform and then the second for the uh, the client that's worth, say, $5 million and, and up? Um, yeah, I mean, we take the same approach in okay. every particular transaction. Again, it's all about complete customization with your agent's company logo and brand on every page. Again, not us, not you, not the carrier, not our lender. It's about promoting them and their value in the relationship. And candidly, you know, everybody that's on the podcast, they know how hard they have to work in order to obtain a relationship with maybe somebody that's wildly successful in our community. And the competition for that individual in smaller towns, we could define smaller as my hometown of Lubbock, Texas, 300,000 people. The competition there is fierce, especially when people in a, in a community that size know that somebody makes three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 or a million dollars a year. Yeah, so you've got to have a way to set yourself apart and to make yourself different. And one of the things that's always fascinated me is that somebody else would offer a platform and encourage you to go out and sell it, but yet it had their name and their brand on it. I never have understood why anybody would get comfortable in going out and promoting somebody else's brand to one of their customers. So we completely removed all of that. And again, it's applicable to the traditional premium finance space, and we don't have time here today to go into the one thing that we do that they won't get anywhere else, and that's our stress test that has proven to be the most historically accurate ever created in the premium finance space. And again, we've been in this space for more than 21 years. We now have over 2,000 transactions that we've completed and funded in those two decades in the space. You know, and you know, I know one of the things you know, Bill, you and I and Carrie have talked about is, you know, there are uh, Johnny come lately's in the space. Yeah, and one of the things I love to do is, well, you know, show me your 10 best cases that have been on the books 10 years. Or show me your 10 best cases that have been on the books 15 years. Better yet, show me your 100 cases that have been on the books for five years. This is all we do each and every day. Our customer relationship, again, and you already know this, begins with the insurance company itself, who in turn share their distribution with us because of our history in the space, you know, our approach and our methodology about doing it right or not doing it all. And, you know, I'll simply stop here in just a second, but one of the things I'm more proud of than anything else is that case I referenced that we completed for National Life Group. It was the home office attorneys in the advanced markets department that sent it to us to design. Hmm. They could have sent that case anywhere in the United States, and they chose North Star Funding Partners. And if you'll forgive me for the – Big feather. For the, big feather in your yeah, cap. Yeah, no, it's, it's the thing that we're more proud of than anything else. All right, and by the way, for those on the podcast today, you know, please tune in tomorrow too because you're going to have our chief marketing officer on the phone, Dale Humphrey, uh, to put in a little plug for our CMO. Um, and it's a shameless plug, but I promise you, I've been in the business soon to be 40 years. Dell Humphrey will be the smartest guy you yeah. ever talked to in the premium finance space. Yeah, I he agree, ran 100%. the largest. He ran the largest bank in the world's premium finance platform for 13 years. 
He is the brightest individual you will ever talk to in the premium finance space. And I am so proud that he is with us. He's been with us now three years and uh, he's just, he, he's a godsend for us. And uh, we're very proud to have him on our team. He's fantastic. So tune in tomorrow yep. to him. Listen to I'll, him. I'll, I'll second that. Let, let me also say uh, one more note here that I, I was just thinking about as you were speaking. You know, you, you talk about some of the competition out there, and, and right now in the market, you know, premium finance is hot. There's a lot of agents uh, making big money on this and IMOs and, and GAs, and there's also a lot of clouds, okay, that when I say clouds, I always refer clouds and dirt, and, and when I say clouds, it's there's a lot of marketing, you know, e-blasts and phone calls going on and saying, <laughs> hey, you know, ABC Financial is now in the premium finance space. Yeah. You know, call our premium finance guru, you know, anytime, Monday to Friday, 9 to 530. Meanwhile, the so-called premium finance guru is sitting at his house in the middle of, you know, Cedar Rapids and, and takes a phone call when you call in. And A, they want to split cases down the middle at 50-50, okay, yeah. which is just horrid. And then B, going back to Kim's point, show me your uh, your best, you know, 10 cases, and they probably can't name two or three. So do your due diligence. We already have, and that's why we landed on North Star's platform and, and Kim's group, okay, but I'm stressing to you – Ask the right questions. Don't just trust anybody, especially if the agency is also an IMO or they're also selling direct to consumer. That is a conflict of interest. So you're trusting your, you know, uh, state planning attorney client that's worth, you know, twelve million dollars, okay, to to some group that's also selling out of the back door with all of your clients' information, okay? It it, it could be a huge problem down the road. So. My point is make sure you ask the right questions. We at Levinson, we made sure to do our due diligence. Carrie, my father, has known Kim for over 20 years. Uh, they have a great relationship. We have a great partnership here. Um, we do all of the, the front end work with you, and then we get North Star involved on the back end, um, and they handle everything from A to Z. So it's your job to find the prospect, and, and we literally take it from there, okay, with the help of Kim's team. So. Okay, Kim, is there anything else uh, that, that you want to add, anything that I, I missed? I, I have a couple questions at the end, but I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything for you. Now, I, you know, it, it, I would be remiss if I didn't offer, you know, being a born and bred Texan, and as I said, a diehard Red Raider earlier, I would be remiss if I didn't throw out this offer to everybody else. There's no way you can learn everything about premium finance in a 45-minute or one-hour podcast. I mean, in Texas, we would call that it's akin to drinking water out of a fire hydrant. All right? So there's there's no way you're going to get it. And to that extent, you know, I know that, you know, Bill can share this with you as a personal experience, as can Kerry and everybody at Levinson and Associates. And the recent case that we just funded for them, and again, it's $540,000 in premium. We work hand in hand with the advisor. You know, we will tweak a case design as many times as is needed. All right. And then when you go in and make the presentation to the client, if that client, we don't do cold calls, by the way, and Bill and Carrie know that, but if once you made the presentation to the client, you know, before you do that, we'll train you up on knowing why the numbers are, why they are, and what they are so that you can explain it. But if after you've made the presentation, your client wants to do a follow-up Q&A with their lawyer and or CPA, look, it's simple. We're all in. Now, we have a no-comp split platform. I know that's terrible news for everybody. And by the way, <laughs> on the small case platform, our case split is only 15%. And we don't have any tranche requirements, so you know we can fund early and fund often. But again, all of our focus is around, A, doing it right, B, making sure we can defend the basis of the numbers, and C, but probably more it's equally as important as anything else, promoting you and your value to your customer. All we want is the opportunity to help. Yep. No, that's that's spot on. Love it, Kim. And 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 just to clarify, what what Kim said is for the the larger case platform or higher net worth individual, there's 
a 0% comp split, okay? For the lower net worth individual, for the IRA, it's 15%, which nobody even has that platform anyway. Um, so right. obviously it is that's very – yeah, exactly. So that's very, very competitive. And then I want to mention, and, and by the way, Kim, before you leave us, I'm going to have you do just a quick, you know, two minute or one minute, you know, pitch. Let's, I want you to pretend like you're a, an agent and you're, you know, visiting a white collar professional. You're just bringing up, you know, what is premium finance? If you can just take a minute to do that. Um, but I want to mention one more thing. So, you know, we have, yes, we have a lot of agents on the call today, um, but I think it's important. Some are, are very, very experienced. Uh, some are veterans. Some are a little younger, right out of college, high school. Um, so I want everyone under, to understand just very A, Bs, and Cs. I like to call it black and white, you know, premium finance story. So I'm going to have uh, Kim just go over a, a little pitch. But I also want to mention that last case that, that we just closed, that was over 500000 of target premium. Great case. And then the month before, for that, we had another case that we worked on, and I want everyone to know that you don't necessarily have to find that prospect that you know doesn't know what life insurance is, doesn't have a policy. Um, last month, we had a LSW or National Life case that was an existing universal life policy where we 1035 the monies into the new premium finance platform, and that also worked great. Okay, so my point is. Go back to your existing book and look for that individual that even has, a, let's say, a, a UL that maybe a million-dollar face amount, nice cash value, but qualifies for a premium finance candidate and then bring up your premium finance pitch, of course. So that's another option to look for business. Okay, uh, before we leave, Kim, if you don't mind, <laughs> I'm taking you back. Uh, can you just, if you can pretend you're just a, an agent, you know, and you're talking to a you know, white-collar professional individual, and you, you're bringing up maybe, maybe the, the client has no idea what premium finance is. They're looking at this as uh, taking out a mortgage on a house or something. How would you explain it just in black and white, you know, to the prospect i just want everyone on the phone to to relate and, and understand if you know I, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to do that can i can i just can i throw out do i have your blessing real quickly to mention the six carriers that have approved the new yes, ira yes. insured retirement advantage platform Please. all right it, be, it begins with national life group and their sister company life of the southwest all right it's also alliance it's also axa it's also ameritas it's also Lincoln Financial Group, and on a case-by-case -case basis, Symmetra, okay? And it's your decision as to which particular carrier. I mean, I start with National Life Group because they were the first ones, and they've obviously been well with – they've been very good to us by sending us the giant case in March to do, too. But And by the know, way, let's we make, have – Kim, we have direct IMO contracts with every yeah. one of those carriers, so that's, yeah. that's, that works great. So, Bill, let's make you the customer. All right. Perfect. Well, I'll be I'll be uh, Kim agent. Okay. Yeah. Just just don't get and into anything too assume, personal, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's assume for a second, you and I. I've been I've been pounding on you for a year, okay. two years about your need for life insurance, and you're the perfect candidate. But you know why? And this comes back full circle to what we talked about at the beginning. You agreed with me while we we're playing golf that you have a need for life insurance. You've even admitted to me that you want to own life insurance, but you've told me flat out I was absolutely nuts if I thought you were going to write me a check for $85,000 a year or for $140,000 a year or for whatever the number is, and that I needed to find another solution for you because, again, you agreed you need it, you even wanted it. You love the idea of the tax-free income option potentially to come out of it, but you just weren't going to pay the premium I showed you it took in order to provide that solution on all three accounts that you asked for. And I said, well, Bill, let me ask you a question. If I had a bank that would make those premium contributions for you, would that be of interest to you? Absolutely. Okay. Well, what's required in it is I need – Two years of tax returns. Well, you know what? First of all, let's back up and let's start with this. Bill, you're going to have to sign an application. Now, you're under no obligation to accept it, but you're going to have to apply for the life insurance 
at a highly rated carrier with the best product, and of course that's whatever product you know the advisor wants to use, but you're gonna have to sign an application, submit it to underwriting, then you're most likely gonna have to take an exam. Again, the caveat to that is, you know, underwriting guidelines at different carriers, all right? And you're gonna have to make a decision. You'll also be required to contribute something to the transaction. Now, I know in this particular case, you said that you needed $6 million and you, again, admitted to me you even wanted it. You just didn't wanna pay the 113,000 bucks. I showed you that it cost. But you know that nothing's free, don't you, Bill? Oh, yeah. No free that lunch. Every, that's right. Everything has a cost. So, Bill, I know over the past couple of years when you and I have talked about this, you always had a number in your mind that you were hoping I would show you that $6 million of life insurance that, again, you said you needed, you agreed you needed, you even wanted, uh, would cost. So, Bill, give me that number. I mean, I, the premium I showed you was 116000 You told me I was nuts. Yeah, so what I'd were you 20, hoping? 20000 25000 Tim? Yeah, so you, you were hoping that I would show you a premium for a permanent life insurance policy that was, say, you know, $2,089.12 a month. Yes, perfect. And I would look back at you and say, that's fantastic. What that represents is your contribution as an interest payment in the transaction. And by the way, in the interest of full disclosure, you know, some carriers require the interest to be paid current. We do have exceptions to a number of those and where they can do a level payment. We don't have time to get into that today. But at the end of the day, I said, Bill, that's great. You know, the policy cash value will serve as the first and primary source of collateral. In the IRA platform, there is no additional collateral obligation right, because we're using an amortized loan. By the way, no other bank offers that. All right, but I can actually provide that for you. All right, as long as you'll make a contribution to the transaction in the form of an interest payment, I have a bank that will make that premium payment for you. Could we meet Tuesday at 10? Absolutely. And of course, we'll take everything from there. You know, again, I want to come back and reemphasize that, again, with yours and Carrie's and everybody's help at Levinson and Associates, we'll do private webinars or private calls with you and your advisors to make sure that he or she is comfortable enough, you know, with what premium finance is about, who are the applicable candidates. You know, some people are, are concerned about asking questions, and, and I get that. I mean, you know, after 40 years of doing this, I understand. You know, but for us, it's really simple. You know, we don't get paid unless we get you paid. And believe it or not, I still like to eat. So again, I'll emphasize all we want is the opportunity to help. If you choose to use us, fantastic. If not, yes, we'll be heartbroken. But look, this is America. You have a choice. You give us a chance. I think we'll make a difference in your practice and your life. So I want to thank everybody this afternoon. Love it. Love it. Well, let, let me let, let me also say before we, we wrap up, um, most important thing here is a you're helping these clients. Okay, at the end of the day, you're getting very, very well in a healthy compensation for helping your clients. Okay, but this will also change your practice. Okay, and and it's like everything else where if you write one of these cases, okay, and you're going to work with us in the beginning, and then we'll get North Star involved, and they will do whatever it takes to get this case placed and help you and us, okay, but it takes one time, and you get your nice commission check, your client is so happy, you're considered Superman or Superwoman, and everybody moves on, you say, wow, you know what, yeah, it took, you know, eight, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, whatever it is. It took a little bit of time, but I can do this again. And now you're looking for other referral sources and other networks, and it just goes on and on and on. But I'm telling you, we've seen it happen multiple times. The cases are out there. Okay, so Kim, do you have anything else before we, uh, we wrap it up? No, I'll just say thank you for the opportunity today. Yep, no, a absolutely. As a uh, Miami Hurricane uh I have to say thank you, Kim, <laughs> for joining us. <laughs> no, 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 no. We we really we really appreciate uh your time and, and, and to all the agents out there, yes, give us a call. All of our marketers are equipped to give you the, the basics and the marketing material. Hope to see you on the webinar or check it out when you get a chance. Uh Kim and North Star have done a fabulous job and once again I want to take my hat off to you and your team. Thanks again. Uh have a great rest of the day. Take care and we'll talk soon.
Thank you for joining us for the Bill Levinson Experience. Please feel free to share this podcast with anyone you think would be interested. You may also visit LevinsonAndAssociates.com and all of Bill Levinson's social media pages for more information.